Despite his campaign promises to get rid of the Iran nuclear deal, President Donald Trump is expected to certify Iran as compliant on their end of the agreement come Monday. They have to certify this every 90 days. Four Republican senators, Cruz, Rubio, Cotton, and Purdue, cited four violations by Iran as reasons to declare Iran non-compliant. Writing in a joint letter to the Secretary of State, even if we manage to chronicle each Iranian violation, it is highly questionable whether the United States can, under current arrangements, ever gain high confidence that Iran's nuclear weapons development has indeed ceased. Here to weigh in, Steve Bucci, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Homeland Security and traveling fellow with the Heritage Foundation. Also, Marie Hart, former State Department Deputy Spokesperson, now Fox News contributor, and as you can see from this picture <laughs> pulled from Instagram, well, she was there when the Iran nuclear deal was made and was a big part of <laughs> selling it to the American people. There she is watching John Kerry watch President Obama announce the deal. So, an expert in every sense of the word. This is why I shouldn't use Instagram. I, 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 we were debating this earlier, <laughs> and here you go. Digital memorials last a long time. Exactly. Uh, all right, so two years later, you're still happy with it? Even happier, actually. When we got this done two years ago, there was a question that a lot of people had in their mind about whether Iran would uphold its end of the deal. And despite all of Iran's other very bad behavior, which we probably agree on, when it comes to the 159 pages of the nuclear deal, they are upholding their end of the bargain. And everything else they do in the region that's bad, support for Hezbollah, the support for the Houthi in Yemen, support for terrorism, would be so much more dangerous if it were backed up by an Iranian nuclear weapon. And so today, while we have many, many differences with Iran, the nuclear issue uh, has, has worked under this agreement. And the Israelis and others will tell you that. And they're telling President Trump that, too, which is, I think, one of the reasons he has well, you, 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 you make it You make an interesting point. This was a big part of President Trump's campaign, how mm -hmm. terrible this deal was, yet he's twice certified it. And at least so far, we, Steve, we don't see it as a main priority of his to renegotiate. Well, but the problem is, and I'm glad Maria pointed out all the other things Iran was doing, those are not insignificant. And frankly, those have been enabled by the agreement because of the release of the funds that allow them to better support terrorism, to better do ballistic missile technology that in cahoots with people like the Koreans, the North Koreans, who already have additional ballistic missile technology and nuclear weapons, you know, they can behave on the nukes. And as long as they're pulling the shenanigans on the other things, we're still at risk. So, Marie, what, what was the balance here? Because as Steve points out, you give Iran a lot of money. It's not like they're going to give it to the poor and help them with food programs and educate their masses. I mean, they educate them in terror, but not in things that we would like them to educate them in. Well, look, the, the main idea of diplomacy here, which a lot of Republicans and Democrats supported when they passed the sanctions, was to use sanctions and the pressure from that to get Iran to the table to curb their nuclear program. And that's exactly what we did. So sanctions relief was always going to be part of the equation. And it's worth remembering this is Iran's money that they got back. It's not American money we gave them. But the key point here is we have tools to clamp down on them on things like ballistic missiles or support for terrorism. So if we see them spending money in these areas, we can slap more sanctions on them. The Obama administration did after the deal and the Trump administration has. We can increase security with our Israeli and Saudi partners, which again, both administrations have. Well, and clearly we see the Trump administration now working more with the Saudis, mm -hmm. uh, with the Qataris when everybody's getting along. John Bolton, uh, never a fan of this deal. We, know, <laughs> we all know that. Marie heard a lot from him uh, during her time at State. Uh, writing in an bet on the Hill today. In the last six months, Iran has made six more months of progress towards posing a mortal threat to America and its allies cared about how close Tehran and North Korea now are. Consider the costs of betting wrong. Steve, to you, since you brought up North Korea, how much of a bet is this? Do you still think there's a bet that North Korea may be developing a nuclear weapon, or sorry, that Iran is developing a nuclear weapon behind our back? Uh, yeah, I think they still are. They, they did a pretty good job hiding the stuff they were doing before the agreement. To think that they're not going to have something down low since the agreement is kind of pie in the sky. When you add their, their cooperation with North Korea, where they can use their nuclear weapons, things like our ballistic missile defense technology becomes that much more important as a backstop for this. I understand President Trump has problems uh, getting rid of this deal, so he's going to have to do some stuff to back 
up that and protect us like the redesign kill vehicle other things to protect us from the ballistic missile technology and the nukes that North Korea is developing and Iran they're cooperating with them well we know we know the missile defense technology is wanting at best Marie mm -hmm. does ambassador Bolton have a point here I don't think he has a point. I think where Steve and I probably can agree is that ballistic missiles are a problem. And that's why we've... Everybody kind of well, agrees Well, right. That and one, that right? Iranian ballistic missiles present a threat to our friends and allies in the region. So working with the Israelis to develop their technology with the Saudis and other Gulf states, those are things that we need to focus on. But thankfully, because of this deal, the Iranians can't put a nuclear warhead on one of those missiles today, which would be an even graver threat. And look, if we find out that they're breaking the deal, we find out they're doing something in secret, we have every option we had before the deal, including military action, we can still take that. We just have two more years without one. Well, at least these four senators seem to think they've already broken the deal. Whether or not the administration does, we'll find out uh, on Monday when they certify this or not or may cut some comment on it. Uh, great conversation. Thanks for being here.